Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sabbath. Freezing, but beautiful Sabbath still. Um, before we proceed, let's start off with a prayer. Thank you, Lord, for being with us through the week. We thank you, Lord, that you've watched over us. You've kept us safe. We ask, Lord, that you comfort those who have lost loved ones. We ask, Lord, that you may put your healing hand on those who are not feeling well. We know, Lord, that we are living through difficult times, but, Lord, we ask that you help us to place our trust in you and that, Lord, everything may go according to your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, indeed, we are living through difficult times. There is covid which is all over. A lot of people have lost loved ones, loved ones. A lot of people have gotten infected and uh, some still have the after effects after they've recovered. But it's not only COVID. We are living in an era where diseases like diabetes and cancer have caused massive suffering in various families and various individuals. Not only that, um, we are living really in a time where the world is has gone way haywire. Even the weather has gone haywire. We hear of stories of where entire towns bend down because um, the world is hotter than what it's supposed to be. We, we hear stories of uh, temperatures being too cold in certain places because uh, the world is simply not where it's supposed to be. Not only that, but we are living in times where making a living itself is not so straightforward. A lot of people are finding it hard to make financial ends meet. A lot of people are finding it difficult to, to provide for their families. And, for, and families are, failing, are falling apart. Entire families are falling apart because of all the a combination of all these problems. For today, I want us to, to, to read uh, from the Word of God. We are going to read from Deuteronomy 9, verses 1 to 3. It says, Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over Jordan this day, to go into, to go in to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself, cities great and fenced up to heaven, a people great and tall, children of the Anakims, whom thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard say, Who can stand before the children of Anak? Understand therefore this day, that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee. As a consuming fire he shall destroy them, and he shall bring them down before thy face. So shall thou drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord said unto thee. Here we see God making a promise to the Israelites that he will go before them and he will prepare and destroy whatever stands in their way. In the Bible there are so many accounts of Places where God has given promises. There are a lot of accounts where nations and individuals and families were facing hopeless situations and God promised that he would watch over them. People who thought that their odds were insurmountable and that all of this was simply too much. The account I will pick from this uh, vast, uh, for, from all these vast choices, is one which is simple and straightforward. It is one that is about the man named Gideon. We find the story of Gideon in in, in Judges chapter six. Well, that, that's where it starts. Um, it goes on to chapters seven and eight. Now, Gideon, as a young man, was not a warrior. Gideon was working and working on his father's farm, 
he was a simple farm boy. And yet, God chose this young man so that he could deliver his people from trouble. In chapter 6 of Judges, we find Gideon working in the field and an angel appears to him and starts talking to him. He, he didn't even know it was an angel at the beginning. But we find this angel talking to him and telling him what he needs to do. In all of this, as the children of Israel had been living peacefully, the enemies that they had vanquished when they moved into this area, they had been building up, their populations had been growing, their armies had been growing stronger, and they were ready to attack Israel. We, we hear from the Bible that the children of Anakim had become strong again, and these were strong people, they were tall people. And uh, as we read in Deuteronomy, not many nations could stand against them. But God had helped the children of Israel to overcome. And later, these same people had come back again and wanted to take over the state of Israel. Now, God works in mysterious ways. He could have easily chosen a man who was strong and powerful. He could have easily chosen a man who was hardened by battle. But here he was choosing Gideon to rally Israel together so that they could defeat this enemy who had come into their midst. Into their midst. And thrive they did. They thrived when Gideon took over. God even reduced the number of people who were going to fight these invaders. God did not want them to get to get too cocky. God did not want them to then turn around and say, because we have gathered together, we have defeated this enemy. God wanted his power to shine through. And for them to understand that without God, nothing can go forward. Now, God reduced the army that was being led by Gideon. And when he did this, there were some people who doubted that they would prevail over the enemy. Only those who believed stayed within that army. Others walked away. Others were sent home through a selection process. Now, when it was time to attack the enemy, they were not armed. They did not have, it, have anything in their, in their arsenal of weapons. They only had uh, torches and they had something to cover the light of those torches. The one who fought for the children of Israel on that day was God the Almighty. The enemy fled and it scattered when it was faced by a very small army, the one that they could see. And yet God's army was there to lead the Israelites. God's army was there to fight for the Israelites as God has promised. Now, if we were to check all the stories of the communities in the Bible, uh, that thrived. We will see that they always thrived because God prepared a way for them. When the children of Israel left Egypt they and traveled in the desert for 40 years, God always went before the children of Israel. During the day, he led them as a pillar of cloud in front of them. During the night, he, he led them and provided warmth for them as a pillar of fire which they could see. Further on in the Bible, we see Joseph and Mary 
who was pregnant at the time, traveling to Bethlehem. They traveled, these roads were dangerous, there were a lot of robbers on the roads, but they made it there safely. Not only did they make it safely to Bethlehem, but when they got to Bethlehem, God had already prepared that they would meet an innkeeper who would be able to provide them with a place to stay. So God always goes before his people. In Acts chapter 6 and 7, we come across the story of Stephen. Now, Stephen was a young man who, who was passionate about working for God. We, we, we see his passion coming through up to the time that he was chosen to be a deacon and he was working for God and he, he would preach about the word of God. And of course, because of that passion, those who, who, who were rulers then uh, felt that their power was being threatened and they were not happy about it. And of, of course, they conspired and came up with a plan to get rid of Stephen. Through all of the things that they did uh, persecuting Stephen, uh, right up to the point where they threw him outside the city and they stoned him. Uh, Stephen simply placed his trust in God. Right up to the very end, and we see that at the end, God was with him. Uh, even those who looked at him, they could see that he had peace. Imagine stones flying to your head and hitting you and you have, they are hitting you, you can see that things are not going well here, but you are peaceful. That, my brothers and sisters, is what God's presence does in one's life. Psalm 30 verse 5 tells us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. As I said when I started, we are really living in unstable times. Trusting in God means trusting him even through all these times, even when things are not going the way we think they should be going. Trusting in God means we trust him even when we are afraid of what is happening around us whether we are afraid of for our lives or whether we are afraid of a person next to us or, or or whatever we are afraid of it means we trust in god it does not matter what we fear we must trust god to take us through all of it sometimes we are even afraid of doing the right thing God has given us the great commission to go out there and preach his, his, his word. But we know that when we go out there, it's not always a straightforward thing. Sometimes it can even impact on us and we are afraid. But we know that God always prepares the way for us. When Jesus finished preaching. He went on a boat. He fell asleep and the storm suddenly hit the sea. The disciples were afraid. They were terrified of what was happening. However, when Jesus woke up and calmed the storm, the disciples realized that they are not dealing with an ordinary man. Their relationship with Jesus was forever transformed. They didn't jump out of the ship. They stayed in the ship where Jesus was. I want to 
give everyone this message today that no matter what we're going through in life, no matter what storm we're facing, it may be a storm that is related to our health, it may be a storm that is related to a, a financial standing, it may be a storm that is even spiritual in nature, it may be a, 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 a storm that is maybe even linked to depression. We know these diseases are there these days. But whatever storm is there, God is available to calm that storm. Whatever storm you are going through, you need to stay next to Jesus in the boat. Whatever storm you are going through, you must not turn away from God. Once you go through that storm with God, your relationship with God will never be the same again. Once you go through that storm with God, your relationship with God will be forever transformed. God goes through us, goes with us through these storms. And these storms polish us. These storms make us stronger. These storms help us to put our trust in God. For without God, we really cannot go through some of these storms. Without God, we would never manage to go through these storms. So, when God finally says, to the storm, hush be still. Only then will we know and understand that indeed he is God. I want to encourage everyone this morning to put their trust in God, to put everything in the hands of God. We know that uh, times are tough. Life as we know it has been disrupted. As it is, we are, not, we are not even able to go to church and have communal prayer. I want to encourage everyone this morning to stay in that boat. Stay in that boat and let God handle it all. Stay in that boat and place your trust in God. I want to thank you for listening this morning. Um, we are going to bow our heads and pray. Father, we want to thank you for always being faithful to us. We ask, Lord, that you may increase our faith. We ask, Lord, that you may be our strength. We ask, Lord, that we may be able to take off this burden that is on us, on our shoulders, and that, Lord, you may place this burden on you. We know, Lord, that you are able to bear this burden for us. And we want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Uh, have a happy Sabbath.